guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review today's game up on the tabletop is called faza or or faza i don't know you try pronouncing alien language in the game faza you're going to be basically playing two to four players it takes about 90 minutes or so and it's for ages 13 and up in the game what's happened is earth's sky has blackened and alien invaders have come and basically decimated everything they're terraforming the land they are destroying humanity and they're causing all kinds of chaos luckily for us there's seem some rebel sympathizers that are basically going to try and help us by destroying the aliens destroyer ship uh, carriers and the former ships if we can do that we can win the game but we need to get those rebels in there this game plays a little bit like ooh, uh, pandemic and those type of games forbidden island with some interesting twists a lot of ways to lose and only one way to win let's go ahead and take a look down below and i'll show you what comes in the game faza how you play and how to win so here we have the game Faza and everything that's going to be included in the game. And as you can see, it plays up to four players. And I went ahead and set it up for two already. Let's go ahead and show you what you get. First of all, you can be either the scientist, the senator, the farmer, or the soldier. They're different colors. And of course, there's a extra class you can choose instead of these ones here. The other one will flip over and become your player reference card. Each player is also going to get four cards that they'll be able to use as actions. And when you use them, you simply turn them to the side. If you take damage, you flip them over and you get some other not so good ability. If you flip over the last card, you die, so be careful with that. Additionally, you're going to be getting this board here along with drone tokens. Drone tokens are yellow, and rebel tokens are purple. Rebels are going to be what help you throughout the game to defeat these motherships, and you're going to have a character as well. I have the red and the green character already located on the board based on one, two, three, and four, and the color associated. So green is going to be one, red will be two, and uh, let's see if I can find three three is blue and so four is going to be yellow 16 15 and 14 will be the different alien motherships. 16 will be green 15 is going to be red and 14 will be blue this will be randomly dealt out as well throughout the game when you place down your alien ships you're going to put three down on the locations they start out and you're going to put two down on the adjacent up down left and right areas of the board if they cross pollinate then in for instance in this area here you're going to put down three max you can only have three drones and three rebels in one single area at any point throughout the game. There is die that you'll be utilizing, which will be mainly used to fight the drones. You're going to have additional Faza cards in which you're going to be flipping over as you defeat these guys here. And to defeat them, you'll take these die from the top of them, starting at four and going down to three, two, and then one, and finally defeating the drone. But drones don't simply go away that easily. You can choose the difficulty of the game, whether you're playing easy, normal, or hard, and how you play the game will determine the different things in which will take place during the Faza phase. These ships are also going to start with blue, red, and then green in the specific order, along with this token here associated with the first blue area here, and it's going to move along the board based on the number of players in the game. So it'll go one, two, and three. It'll, it'll move across the board. Uh, and, and then you're also going to have a rule book and, of course, the box for the game. Set aside the extra drones and the extra rebels you'll be utilizing throughout the game, and remove any player tokens and or player cards that you're not going to be using based on the number of players you're playing with. We'll be showing you a two-player game as to how it kind of functions, and then we'll come up and I will tell you my review of the game. Let's go down, take it below, and I will show you how it works. So I went ahead and set up the game for two players and removed the third and fourth player from the game. We also chose the soldier and farmer as opposed to the scout and the doctor. These cards then get flipped over and you're using them as player references and you're pretty much ready to go. Don't forget to also put two rebels on each of the players starting areas. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to win the game really quick. To win the game, you have to get all of these die to zero from these motherships. And if you can do that, you win. When you kill a mothership, you flip it over and it becomes a destroyed mothership ship um, over here is the difficulty we'll just show you easy mode but normal and hard mode actually have some different interesting things that i'll talk about during the review make sure you shuffle up your faza deck and place it next to the board so that you can go ahead and draw them whenever you defeat or destroy uh the the ship so every time you flip this die over from four to three three to two so on and so forth you'll draw a card and see what happens and put the die in a reasonable location so that you can go ahead and draw roll them when you need to fight drones to begin the game it's gonna be the player 
player's turn first. And the players are simply going to use their cards and do the actions on them. And each card has two abilities that they can go ahead and utilize. Each player will use all of their abilities. And once they've all been used, that will be the end of the player's turn. These are the different abilities they get. And all of them have different abilities along with a specific unique action that specific character can take. The soldier, for instance, has a skill at once during combat, they can spend a point to reroll all failed die. Very, very useful. Points are considered to be drones, drones that they have defeated. You can go ahead and place the drones whenever you defeat them on your soldier or your farmer area of your player board to indicate that you have those points to spend. Remember though, be careful because to lose the game, you have to A, if any player dies, B, if there are no outposts left on the board, AKA they flip over and it becomes different terrain, like this deadly terrain over here. A C, if no drone can be placed on the board, regardless of whether they're in a pool here or on your player board, if you can't place it down on this board here, then you're going to suffer uh, a severe, severe loss. And then um, there's of course additional loss conditions and whatnot for the different player difficulty levels. This is the first action you can take. It's called run. It's the main one that you'll be using throughout the game other than maybe airplane. And it says you can move yourself or a group of rebels one space. So if you turn this card to the side, that'll indicate that you've used that card and you can move your character one space on the board, or you can use it to move a group of rebels one space on the board as well. Uh, the other one is bazooka on this card. It says you can engage in combat against drones on an adjacent tile and ignore injuries. So let's go ahead and show you a quick turn with one of the players. First, I will go ahead and choose to do a run. I'll move this character here. And secondly, I'm going to engage in combat. Every player can do any of these abilities anytime they want throughout their turn for free. You can use a player card. Sometimes they're going to be these guys here. You can engage in drones in combat, which is pretty simple. I'll show you that right now. Based on the number of drones, how many die you get. So there's two drones here and one character. Roll these die and you need four up. Four up is going to defeat them. Nice. That would defeat them right there. If you rolled something like a four and a three, you would suffer one injury. And to get suffer an injury, you have to flip over one of your cards and you'll get new abilities that are not as good. So you have to be careful with that. But luckily I rolled a four and a five. So that would destroy these guys here. Very, very useful. Another thing too, like I said, is bazooka. So if these two guys were there and I wanted to use the bazooka as well as during my attack, I could simply roll the die and... Oh, I got it again. But if I got this, I would kill one of them and ignore that and I wouldn't suffer a wound because I used my bazooka card. Very, very nice. Uh, another thing you can do is use airplane. It allows you to move yourself or a group of rebels up to two spaces, uh, two tiles. And you also can skip adjacent spaces, which is pretty nice. Uh, the other one is Reagan over here and it says use before you engage in combat to add a plus one to all your dies rolled against drones. And then the last one over here is the same thing as well. Some players have different things like this character can heal and he can also teleport. So depending on the color and uh, the class you have is going to depend on what specific passive ability you get as well as specific cards and their abilities. If you have a card flipped over, you can have hobble, which just means you can just move yourself one tile and you can't move rebels with uh, while injured. And this is recover. It'll actually let you, if you're at an outpost, it'll let you recover. If you're on a tile with drones, you cannot move off that tile until you defeat the drones. If all players have utilized all of their abilities, then it's going to go to the Faza phase, in which case it's going to be based on the number of players as to how many times this moves. You'll look at this card here and it'll tell you. The mothership will move. Repeat the following times as many as, many as there are players. Shift the movement tracker once to the right, and then the mothership uh, will, with the tracker, activate. So this tracker is here. This will activate this specific mothership. It will allow this mothership to move. And it's going to be based on this little uh, movement area over here. It says move the destroyer up to two tiles um, closer to the closest player. So in this case, it would go one and two. Um, and uh, it says a highest t number tile will break the tie. So if there was a character in this area here and an area, this area here, this would be 15 and this would be two. So he would go up. After he's moved, he will kill all rebels on the tile. So he would go ahead and do this oop, and destroy the rebels. All players on this tile will suffer an injury. So red would suffer an injury. And whenever you take an injury, depending on which way your, your cards are, are, are uh, situated, you're going to flip them over. So in this case, it would flip like that. If it was like this, it would flip like this. So he would do that. Uh, then he would drop three drones. You'll take three from the supply and you'll place them down on the board just like that. That makes it much more difficult for red here to deal with. After that happens, you'll take this thing and move it one more time for the second player, and you will move the former. And this thing here is what's going to be terraforming the, the land. First of all, it will 
uh, move the former to the nearest tile that's not yet terraformed or phasiformed, and it's basically the highest number will break ties. So this is a three, seven, and a 10, so it will go this way here, and then it's going to go ahead and flip over that specific tile, terraforming it into not good stuff, into wasteland, basically. Ooh, and it's a deadly area. Deadly areas will make you take damage when, you st when you're on them. Uh, so that would be that, and make sure you leave your drones there. After that, it says move the ship again, and so you've got a six and a two, so he will move this way over here, and once again, flip this thing over here. After that, he's gonna go ahead and drop two drones onto the board, so it would go just like that. All right. Then, oh, in this game, put it like there. Uh, and then after that, uh, that has been the two movements, one and two for the two different players, in which case all players are going to regain their cards. You're gonna shift them all back face up just like this. And if you have taken damage, it still stays on the flip side until you're able, able to recover by using an action. And then you would continue the game. Another thing to note too is these, so for instance, this guy here, he had defeated two dudes, so. Uh, we'll just put them over here. When you have these things as currency, you can spend them to recruit rebels. So for two for one, you can place a rebel on an area. Rebels can prevent you from taking damage by removing them. And they also have a special, some other special abilities that you can utilize based on your characters. Uh, you can command a rebel to attack the mothership. So for instance, if you have a rebel on the same space as a mothership and there were no drones, you could, if you wanted to, remove the rebel and damage the mothership. And that's a free action. You'll simply go from four and you'll move it to three. And whenever a mothership takes damage, you're gonna draw a Faza card. This card here is called a long a Faza card, in which case you will do what it says on the top and then you're gonna place it somewhere that it says to do so. So this one says add two drones, in which case this specific mothership will add two drones. And then this one here specifically says the Faza create a time warp generator allowing this mothership to move twice as fast. Place this uh, onto the mothership that was damaged. It will now activate an additional time uh, with the movement tracker. So we'll go to the blue. You'll attach it to this specific mothership. And the only way to get rid of this guy is two times two plus X. X is the number of players based on the currency. So if you had four currency, you can remove this card from the game. There's other cards as well. This one here is a reward, which means it gives you some kind of bonus, but it also does does that add two drones effect. This one here is a instant, which means it takes place as soon as you draw it. And sometimes it'll do stuff like you'll take an injury or whatnot. And then the final type is going to be a short one. This one basically says that it's going to last until the next card is drawn. The files that deploy precision patrols. Every time a player enters an even numbered tile, add one drone to that tile. So these cards are usually not going to be good, but sometimes they're going to be rewards as well. And the game will progress like that. Players will then again take their turns until they've all utilized all of their actions. The Faz is going to go ahead and move and have all of the motherships move and terraform. And the game will continue until one of the conditions of ending the game have been met. For instance, if all these tiles are flipped, game over. These guys are going to be the winners. If all of these into the field or cannot be placed. These guys will also win, the bad guys will win. And then if any player dies, the other pl the players will lose as well. The only way the players win is by removing the die from these things and basically destroying the motherships. But when you destroy them, you simply flip them over and they will still activate doing certain things to kind of end the game. In this case, this one's here, here will add one drone to every player's location, as well as remove two drones from the pool and place them on here. Like I said, when these guys are all removed, the game is over. So you have to be careful when you destroy these and how you destroy them. And that is the basic idea for the game. If you can destroy all these ships before they go around the board, destroying everything and ruining your day, you're gonna win the game. If you can't and lose to any of these conditions, then you have to start over and try again on probably an easier difficulty level. Let's come up, I'll tell you about normal and hard mode, and then I'll say what I think about the game. So let's go ahead and discuss some caveats for the game before we get into my review and discussion about the normal, medium, and uh, normal and hard modes. I already talked about the easy modes. Uh, and the first one is when you have a character that is on a tile of the same color, your combat bonus is increased by one, so all your die get a plus one bonus. That's very important, and I do not want to miss that. Uh, normal mode is going to include something along the lines of the Faz attacks the players. If you're on a tile with a drone or a mothership, you sustain an injury, uh, as opposed to in the other version, you don't. And then the other one here is the hard mode. And that one says that uh, not only do you just to say, sustain an injury if there is a drone or mothership on your board, but you can also 
uh, just drones destroy rebels. So if they're on the same space, it will also do, do damage that way. These are pretty pretty crazy. Uh, and also add a drone to every space with a with uh, with a rebel. So uh, it gets much more challenging with the different difficulties that you choose to play with. We mainly played on normal mode. We lost on hard mode, and we easily did well on easy mode. So it worked out pretty well. The game has quite a few characters to choose from. I believe there's a total of eight, and you can kind of use them interchangeably it's up to you how you want to their passive abilities are very different along with the choice of cards and how you want to utilize them ray gun and airplane or teleport and heal are definitely different actions so choosing the play style that works best for you is important in this game the most important thing is determining when and how you want to defeat these motherships because it's very likely that you can defeat at least one or two of them but it's how you want to do so and when based on the board's state and being careful to choose your actions wisely if you don't you're going to suffer serious injury and potential potentially die as well. Not only that, but each of the different carriers and or the formers and the destroyers, they're all going to do different things to significantly increase the chances of the bad guys winning, and they all function differently. The terraformer is all by itself, and if it keeps going around, it has a timer as to when the game's going to be over, and so do the other two as well. So you want to focus on the one that is doing the best at the time based on maybe the cards and how they are drawn. There is a bit of luck in the game. When you roll the die, yes, there's a ton of mitigation as to using your bonuses on the spaces provided as well as the cards from the rewards and even your actions as well they can give you bonuses or pretend prevent uh, potentially prevent you from taking damage using something like the bazooka but still a roll of the dice nonetheless the cards as well can either be rewards or complete disasters depending on what you draw and that's a lot of fun as well because you're always still able to mitigate provided you make the best choices possible as playing this game i realized that every time I continued to try and play it in a different way, there were certain things I realized I could have done better the next game. And I did improve significantly each time I played, which allowed me to progress to the more harder difficulty levels, even though I still got stomped on the hard mode. With more players, it becomes more fun, but this game works really well to players, and I really did enjoy myself along with Grant. We had a ton of fun playing this, and I really enjoy the fact that even though you defeated the carriers and whatnot, they still are going to move around and do certain things to try and end the game. So they're not necessarily done for, they just change their actions a little bit and function in a slightly different way. There's quite a bit of replayability as well, but the game plays similarly each time you play it depending on the difficulty you choose to play, much like a game like Pandemic or Forbidden Island, as well as um, the other one by uh, Magic Meeple, Fires of Eidolon. They all have that idea of how you want to try and progress throughout the game, but it still feels very, very different from those games because of the way in which you need to interact with the board and how you need to interact with your fellow players to use your actions to your advantage. I really, really enjoyed this game. I would like to see probably some high quality components, maybe even miniature spaceships and whatnot, but even as it stands, it's very charming in its own unique way. I do like the artwork for this game. I like the feel of it. It reminds me of those old alien movies from back in the 80s, and I do enjoy those movies quite a bit, and this gave me a lot of nostalgia in that sense. The mechanics are fun, the die rolling is engaging and intense, and choosing your actions is very important. If you don't like games like Pandemic, you're probably not going to like this one because it is not that far off from a game like that, and so which it probably will not make you a believer, but it is different enough to where if you own that game, this one's still a good choice. And in fact, because you own that one, this one might be an even bigger choice because I think your playgroup will enjoy this one. Uh, if you don't like any luck in a game, if you're a very specific non-luck gamer, this has die rolls as well as card draws, and sometimes it'll benefit you and sometimes it won't, and you'll have to make do with the best choices possible, so that might not be for you as well. In my opinion though, the game is very, very good. I really enjoyed this game and it's a game I'm going to play again. In fact, so much that I'm giving this game my seal of approval. It was not only my idea, but everybody at the tables after playing it for the third time, we just really, really enjoyed this game. Regardless of the fact that we cannot pronounce the name, Faza, Faza, I don't know, still really good. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, please check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at the game Faza, Faza. It is a lot of fun for those of you who are big Pandemic fans. This one is one I probably wouldn't pass up because I really, really do enjoy this game, specifically because of the completely different ways you can lose the game and how you can mitigate your losses, as well as checking out my website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget our live stream every Wednesday 
Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. We have a lot of fun to play games just like this one down below. And if you want, you can go ahead and do so. And there's a ton of games that you can win in our giveaway. We announce them live on stream every time and people win all the time, which is a lot of fun for us, even though it costs us shipping. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to defending the world with you next time.